Yeah, 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 yeah. Lil Brunson, back at you with the back at you, and I am the best reporting on the Eagles. Jason Avant, welcome home first and foremost. You know what I'm saying? Jason Avant is, a, you know, a longtime Eagle, sure-handed, wasn't like, I can't say he was like crazy, like a T.O. type of receiver, wasn't big, wasn't physically imposing, wasn't the fastest guy, but he had those qualities, those qualities that put you over the hump at wide receiver. A lot of guys have speed, a lot of guys have strength, but they don't know how to combine it with the small nuances that make you great, that small attention to detail. Jason Avant had that. Jason Avant is going to be joining the Philadelphia Eagles for minicamp and training camp through the Bill Walsh Diversity Program. It's going to be lit. It's a great opportunity for Jason Avant. Now, with the Bill Walsh, the Bill Walsh Diversity Program, in a sense, is kind of like on a job training. Well, that's exactly what it is. It'll give him the opportunity to come into these mini camps and to come into these um, training camps and, you know, preseason things and to get his feet wet, to get acclimated and see how head coaches move. You know what I'm saying? To get to get to get system oriented. Once he gets done in that, that'll go on his resume. And he'll be able to pitch himself beautifully to other teams. He'll be able to sell himself better. Listen, I did this. Check. I know something. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's like putting on your resume that you were a veteran. That goes a long way. I'm a veteran. I know. If you could put that you've been on the battlefield, so to speak. Come on, man. A lot of people are going to say this guy has some qualities, leadership. He has something that I like. You know what I mean? And um, guys like Jalen Rager, guys like Hightower, guys are going to learn a lot from him. And this comes in a beautiful time to where Marquise Goodwin actually opts out. This comes into a perfect time. Now, I thought about him opting out. You know, shout out to my guy, John. You know what I mean? My guy, John Wall. John actually was telling me that. Uh, but well, he I seen a I seen a comment. He was actually saying something like, you know, him opting out is smart because nobody thought he was going to make the roster anyway. So it kind of saves him his job, and he still gets paid. I guess you could kind of see it like that. It was a lot of competition coming his way this upcoming season. You know what I mean? I, I expected to see good things from him. It's some things that that the, that it's some things that the rookies could have learned from him because he is a vet. But we got Deshaun and we got Alshon Jeffrey for that. And now we got Jason Avant. So I think this was a beautiful move by the Philadelphia Eagles. And in and, and, and wake of losing a guy who, who wanted to opt out in the wide receiver core that we traded for, you know, because we had high hopes for in the beginning, I think it was a beautiful move, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, a, lot, a, a lot has been put into, you know, this top 100 list. I'm not going to lose no sleep over it, man. I'm not going to lose no sleep over it. You know, I can be upset that Carson Wentz isn't on the top 100 list. Well, I could take it with a grain of salt. Carson Wentz is going to use his demotivation, and he's going to destroy. I'm telling you what's going to happen. He's going to use this as motivation, and he's going to go out there and put in work. He had better numbers than Tom Brady. He had better numbers than Aaron Rodgers. He won his division. You know what I'm saying? People leaving me messages talking about, oh, the players have spoken. Well, they speak in the wrong language. Because if you can't sit here and tell me a logical reason as to why this man is not in the top 100, then you bugging. When you look at other players like Dak Prescott, for instance, his whole little three-minute segment of them explaining why he's in the top 100 was about the stats. What's about the stats? There was no big wins put. There was no big win moments. They couldn't do none of that because none of that happened for him. None of that happened for him. When they explained why Tannehill was on the top 100, it was big moments. There was no big moments for Dak Prescott last year. Carson Wentz had the big moments in the division from the quarterback spot. Now, I understand y'all wanted the Dallas Cowboys to win a division last year. They didn't get it done. They let y'all down. I understand it. I understand Dak Prescott's peers wanting to come to back for him because they feel like he should have got a contract. I understand all of that. But the fact of the matters remain this. The truth of the matter is this. One guy won eight and eight. One guy won his division with nothing around him. That's the truth. That's the meat and potatoes. You can't spin that narrative. You can't twist reality into making it to what you want. You can't. I said Dak deserved to be on the list. Sure. Sure he does. If you're going to throw Kyler Murray in there. Sure Dak deserves to be on the list. But you can't have no Kyler Murray and Dak Prescott and Ryan Tannehill on the list. Josh Allen. 
without no Carson Wentz. It don't. It just don't sit logically with me. So whoever voted for the list, you know what I mean. Good for y'all. And this is what we get. This is what we get. Actually, you know what I'm saying. We get you. You know. This is what we ask for. When the commentators do it, and the analysts do it, and they do their due diligence by keeping it as thorough as possible, we say let's do something for the players. Let's let the players make the decision. Let's let the players make the decision. And they do things like this every year with the top 100 list. I mean, I don't understand it. How do you have Carson Wentz on the top 100 last, last year when he didn't finish the season or start it? He actually had a 5-6 record before they shut him down because his back was certain. How you have him on? How? 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 It makes no sense to me, man. But we're going to move past that because now he got weapons. And you're going to see what happened in week one against Washington last year happened in multiple weeks. Jason Nevada is going to be a big part of, you know, getting this thing spun up. Making sure everybody is, you know, learning the small things that count as far as wide receivers go. I'm happy that they're bringing in more eyes and more, and more minds because wide receiver really hindered the progress of the football team last year. We really and truly needed better wide receivers. We needed better play on the outside. It crippled Carson Wentz to a, to a degree. But, 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 but the brilliance of Carson Wentz is this. He still managed to win his division. Still managed to break an Eagles franchise record. For first first 4,000 passing yard quarterback in the history of the Philadelphia Eagles. First 4,000 passing yard, first 4,000 yard passing quarterback. To not have a wide receiver get 500 yards. You can't make this up. I'm not making this up when I tell you this is what really happened. This is what really happened. Am I salty and bitter that my guy who did all of that is not on the top 100 list? Absolutely. I'm not going to even sit here and act like I'm, I'm not mad about it. It drives me crazy thinking about it. It does. But I also understand that the peers voted for it. I also understand that certain people's peers are looking out for the best interests of other quarterbacks. Dudes are hope dudes are looking out for Dak Prescott. They feel obligated to say he's good because he didn't get paid. When the fact of the matter is this, if he was really that good, if he was really that good, he would have won his division with the weapons around him. You know what I mean? And I'm not trying to knock him for making a list because like I said, he deserves to make the list. But the disrespect is real. And I believe Carson Wentz will be ready to answer the call. I'm glad they didn't put him on the list. I don't want him thinking he deserved anything. I'm glad they didn't put him on the list. Next season, the coaching staff is going to be the coaching staff is going to be different from the skill position coaches. And I think that the Philadelphia Eagles are going to look so different. It's going to blow our minds. It's going to blow our minds. You know what I mean? No more slow starts. Defense looking elite. I'm ready for the season to start. <laughs>